Uh, Alright, hello. What's going on? Um, so, I'm pretty sure these are from scrims. Yeah, it looks like it. But I'm going to be going over uh, the independent codes that a few of you had sent me. I'm sitting in the Discord, so somebody might wind up hopping in midway through this. I'm going to try to keep these fairly brief, all things considered. Um, but I just want to, you know, give you a look at your first person perspective, give you something to look back on, and then give you a few notes and a few things to maybe work on um, over the next week or so. Uh, so, like, for instance... I told STT, focus on his ability to listen to his teammates and stuff like that. So we're going to look through for a little bit. I might be silent for some parts of it. Who knows? Um, but this is, I'm starting with Lana just because she was at the top of my list uh, in terms of like who sent me the code last, I guess, or who messaged me last or whatever. Um, so we'll just look through this for a little bit. Probably just look through, you know, the first defense or, or whatnot uh, and then pick out a few key things because there's going to be a lot of things that we could probably pick on. Um, but we want to go for the most surface level ones to start uh okay so i want to start by looking at general positioning here because we're holding very far forward so i think you know positioning is in relation to your team the map and the enemy team um so i think in relation to your team your positioning is good in relation to the map your team's positioning in general just may not be too great um or maybe the push is a little bit sloppy but i want to look back at this So, uh, STT makes a slight misplay by pushing, letting the uh, enemy DPS into his back by, you know, facing away from them. Uh, but your misplay there is Guardian Angeling over, away from the, the space that your team is controlling, uh, which is, you know, towards spawn. Um, and towards kind of like the, the middle of nowhere where the enemy team just has good control and then going from a res from there. Uh, once STT goes in, you have to still rotate back here. I'm going to let, we're going to go back and I'm going to give you a third person perspective so that you can see, uh, from right here, actually, let's look at this fight again. Okay. Do -do -do. All right. So once STT makes this kind of like push forward, you actually have no choice um, but to rotate backwards. Because if you see here, there's a wall of enemies and Jax is on the other side, but Jax is playing Tracer. So Tracer has the ability to exist anywhere uh, for the most part because she has the ability, as long as she's uh, mechanically good and her reaction speed is good, she can dodge and reposition like extremely quickly. Um, so you can't you know, base anything off of where Jax is because he's playing a character that defies normal uh, conventional like positioning uh, fundamentals. So here, STT and Klo wind up pushing this way, which like I said, was a bad maneuver on their part because it licks the DPS into their back. But what you do is you push behind them, um, which is just as bad because it also puts you into the middle of their team and separates you from uh, anybody who can help you like Alexis or Frosty back here who might be able to flash people and stun them uh, when they try to go for you. Essentially what you have to do instead is to just rotate back to try to meet STT and Klo on the other side without sacri like without going too far because the main thing you have to recognize is support is you're super duper important to the team composition and you staying alive is actually more important most times uh than anybody else staying alive and the reason is because there's nobody else who can um recover anything in the team fight um dps and tanks can stop things from happening uh but supports are the only one who can recover from mistakes uh, and help the team get back to a neutral state. So if you don't have supports, you are essentially, you essentially have to play perfect if you don't have supports. Uh, because every time you make a mistake and it gets punished, that mistake becomes permanent. Supports are like mistake menders. You could have gone for this touch. Just as an overview. It would have required a lot of coordination, probably, you know, would have failed, uh, as you guys are now, but it's better to experiment sometimes. Where did Alexis go? Because you should have 
turned around as soon as uh, as soon as Frosty died. Like you're helping Frosty get out. Cool, cool, cool. You should have basically 180 to try to find Alexis again in Guardian Angel. Uh, it's okay that you don't because like they're gonna probably run you down anyway. Um, but if you can avoid getting run down there, it's a big boon to the team. Because now you're the last person who died, blah, 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 you're, it's going to take longer, etc, etc. I've, I've, I've said all these things before. Well, actually, now Jax is the last person who died, which I guess we'll maybe see something about that in his clips. Um, hmm. So I think one of the things that you need to really work on is your moment-to-moment -moment decision making. Um, because what I'm noticing is that there's a lot of situations where, you know, there's options available to you for what to do, but you don't seem to know which decision to make or even that there are decisions to be made. So I want to start with a fundamental question, or I just want to start with like a baseline question uh, when you're playing these games. What am I doing? Uh, I think I think that's a really important question to ask moment to moment and it's not a question that like you know you only ask for people in your rank it's, it's a question that has to be asked all the time and it's something that really makes you know high level players really good is that for the highest level players they always know what they're doing um, and they're always making a decision if not the right decision so like this is something that we're going to talk about with complex too when I'm looking at his stuff um, is like what are you doing right now what's your goal right now you should always be looking to be productive. Are you regrouping with your team? Uh, if you're regrouping with your team, could you be getting more value out of it? Are you looking to farm ult? Uh, if you're looking to farm ult, are you doing it in the most optimal way? Should you be throwing your nade? Or should you just hold on to the nade for later use? Is it more important for you to scope in or not scope in? They're really, really small decisions, but you have to start asking yourself as you play the game, what am I doing? And this is why it's really important sometimes for... Um, you know, you guys to make sure that when you're playing the, 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 like if you're doing ranked runs or if you're just playing the game in general, that you're really trying to play it as seriously as possible. Because this is, I think the effect of playing games aloof, because more often than not, you do things automatically, which means when you get into new situations, um, because you're not actively thinking about the games you're playing, you're just floating in and out of situations and you just move on too quickly without thinking critically about what you could have done or what you should have done uh, and it might be stunting kind of like your ability to grow uh, because you're so unable to decide in the game but then you're so unwilling to think about it outside of the game as well um, so I think it might be really important that when you're playing games you try harder to kind of like talk about things that went wrong for yourself and try to think about ways that you maybe could have uh, changed the uh, change the situation right sometimes it requires you to think even further back um, like I think there you could have either positioned better uh, like if we're going back to the high noon situation I think you could have either positioned better so that you were actively behind the shield or you could have let me make sure I didn't go too too far okay or you could have slept the McCree because he wasn't actively behind his shield but you kind of sit in between a rock and a hard place here because you don't you don't uh you don't go into the immortality where the tanks are and you also stand out where you can maybe hit a sleep but you don't try to and you wind up dying for it right so we want to make sure that we're thinking about these things as much as we can uh trying to slow them down in our own head as much as you remember them sometimes it's going to require you to look back at the replay it might require a lot more just you know in terms of working moments you might need to be like looking at your own gameplay more to actually act, get like an active understanding of what you could have done um but i think it's really important that you start figuring out the decisions that you want to make and then on top of it for mercy you're probably going to need to learn fairly soon uh how to super jump because it is one of her core features um luna really really loves the mechanics so she can probably help you learn it if you want to ask her uh there's plenty of guides online and if they're not working out for you i can try to teach you super jumping as much as i can it's not something i've like perfected on on uh, pc yet but i can do it <laughs> um 
there's a lot of variations to super jumping so i just want you to look for basic super jumping figure out how to just do the neutral super jump that just sends you straight into the air uh, regardless of height or velocity or distance or anything like that um and then for anna anna's like gonna come down to a lot of supports is gonna come down to like decision making um but but mercy is almost purely decision making and Ana is still heavily reliant on decision making. So if those are two supports that you're gravitating towards, you're going to have to figure out um, when you like move to preserve your own life, when you move to preserve another person's life, when you want to take risks, and all of that is going to come down to you starting to think about what's good, what's bad in the game, and starting to think about why you decide to do things and uh, what you're doing from moment to moment. So might be short honestly it's a little bit abstract so if you're having trouble kind of understanding or working on it in any sort of way just you know dm me let me know and then we can uh we can kind of talk about it a little bit more but for now just try to maybe ask yourself what was i doing in that situation what value was i trying to get uh and was there a better play that i could have made so that you can start reacting faster to things all right, 11 minutes, trying to keep it generally short so you guys can skim through it and actually get to the play part of it because I don't want you sitting through long, long VOD reviews for your personal stuff. I want you looking through the team stuff more so right now. So uh, just keep working at it and DM me if you need me.